Welcome home. This is the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. Come right this way, have a seat with me today again in the corner booth celebrating our 73rd week. Sweeney clear the floor, Katie bar the door, Molly put on another pot of Irish coffee. It's time we got this show on the road. We've got another full house today. There's not a chair to spare. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host. You can reach me anytime on my webpage at irishroots.com where you can just click on the contact link and send me a message. I'll get back to you as soon as I can, if possible. And you can also check out the uh, written show notes on our blog. I include some information that I can't include in the uh, uh, podcast here just because of time limitations. So it's a little expanded version, I guess you'd say. And by the way, and yes, it's just another free service from the Irish Roots Cafe. And you can also phone me at 816-256-3360 to leave your comments, your family search, your song, or your recitation on my recorder. Try it, you'll like it. Among today's topics, why was the Lisbon Treaty voted down in Ireland? What was a Lisbon Treaty anyway? Cunahan is the name of the week. Famous Donnellys in Cavan and America. Families of County Kerry is the book of the week again. And in search of Clark, Kane, Carol, Byrne, Gallivan, and Dunn. The Christian brothers leave Ireland. Aer Lingus cuts Los Angeles. Muslim headscarves in Wexford. Have you ever been in the buff at Blarney Castle? Well, a thousand other people have. And the Galway movie flea might pay you for a movie idea. All that and more coming up. Now, remember, you can get all three of my uh, free bo- broadcasts online, and you just uh, uh, you can click on my blog. It'll take you there. You can go to irishroots.com. We've got three, three different series, just to let you know. One of them is the Irish in America, and I think we've done about 23 or 24 of those. Irish Families Worldwide, which is this broadcast right here, and we've done, this is our 73rd. Mm-hmm. And the Irish Song and Recitation Festival, we've done, what, 13 or 14 of those? My gosh, we've done over 110 podcasts, I think. I didn't add it up, but I'd be guessing we're just around that there somewhere. Well, let's move on to the notes for the week. Well, we've now got uh, three complete shows up on the Georgia Irish that we did on... uh, Uh, centering on the savannah area as of today the third one just went up so uh be sure to tune into that it always pays to know what's going on in the rest of the country not just uh, your own area and anybody wants to get their area included just holler at me we'll get it done and hey here's something interesting uh it happened right here at the irish roots cafe i was reading my email here was a different one and i got an email from uh brefney clark in county cavan just the other day And we got to talking by email, and and I noted uh, that there were two famous Donnellys from County Cavan that were very prominent in uh, Kansas City. It seems that some of the people in Cavan were bemoaning the fact that they didn't have very many famous people. Uh, I think it was General Sheridan was one that they knew of, but they seemed to didn't they just didn't weren't aware of very many others. So there's two real quick that came to mind, and. Well, let me see. Who were these two Donnellys from County Cavan? Well, first, the largest dressmaker in the United States from earlier days was founded by a Donnelly from Cavan, or of Cavan Roots. And you know what he did? He took the names, the name of Donnelly and reversed the syllables syllables in in the name, and he called the company Nellie Don. Now, isn't that amazing? And that was the largest dressmaker in the country for a while. Of course, that was quite a few decades decades ago well there's even a web page and a movie on this Donnelly operation Uh, so that qualifies as famous I think and secondly father Bernard Donnelly who was known as the builder in Kansas City and he came from Kilna Creva County Cavan and he brought the first group of Irish laborers to level the streets of the city 
And anyone with, familiar with history here will know of Father Donnelly, and I included him naturally in the Missouri Irish book that I recently republished. And I tell you what was interesting. Old uh, Brefney called me, and, and, and had, we'd talked briefly, and I, I told him that uh, Kilnacreva was where Father Donnelly had come from, and g by golly, you know that uh, Brefney Clark, the fellow who called me, he was just about five minutes away by driving uh, from Kilnacreva. So I'm telling you, there's forces at work here we don't all understand, but it happens to me all the time. And uh, he tells me that there's still plenty of Donnellys in that area. So I've got him looking around to see if there's somebody that might want to uh, call in and talk. I even sent, a, sent him a picture of the fa Father Donnelly here, and uh, maybe he'll be walking down the street, and I'll see somebody looks just like the old Father Donnelly. And then we could do a little DNA test, maybe. That'd be interesting. But I just thought I'd pass that on. It was pretty interesting to me. Hey, and by the way, we talked about DNA. I just, just, just five minutes ago got a note from Family Tree DNA, and it says they're cutting their prices on uh, Y-DNA upgrades by about 25%, and that's going to last just about 10 days, so take advantage of it as soon as you hear it if you were planning on doing such a thing. That would be on upgrading your original test to a, a better one that, that traces even uh, more than the first one did. Now let's see, the last note uh, from the cafe here today, I just had to bring this one up. Here's a fellow who's traced back 4,000 descendants from his original ancestor who came to Massachusetts in about 1740, settling in Bridgewater. Now, Andrew Munn Henry is still looking for the origin of the family in Northern Ireland. It seems that they were settled in Raffo, County Donegal in the early 17th century from Scotland. And of course, the name can also be Hendry or Hindi, uh, as, as well as Henry or Hendry. Uh, and you can spell that with a Y or an IE at the end. And I tell you, with 4,000 descendants already traced, some of you listening out there are related. Uh, let us know if you're a candidate for that or if you might know the Irish origin of this family. You could make 4,000 people in America very happy by uh, clicking on their origins, and we'll help spread the word. Oh, one more note. It also said that uh, the Hendry family had close ties to the Harper family in early America. So there's another tie. You never know what will make the uh, difference in the research. Well, gosh, I better move on here. That took up more time than I regularly do with the news around the uh, uh, cafe here. And let's move on to the book of the month. Well, today we're going to look at the families of County Kerry, Ireland again. And that's the hardbound uh, book on Kerry families. That is volume two in our 34 book set from the Irish Families Project. And we also have a spiral bound smaller volume on County Kerry genealogy and family history notes. But we're focusing on the Families of County Kerry hardbound volume. And uh, uh, we've got over a 1,000 families uh, put in that along with what family history I could dig up. And it occupies a place close to my heart because it was the first of the county books that I did. And uh, it's also where the Donahues of County Kerry came from, which were my mother's people. So I did a little extra work on this one, as you might imagine. And what are we going to look at? Well, how about the families on the map of the Four Masters from the Annals of the Four Masters? Uh, who do, what is that map? When you unfold it, take it off the book there and unfold it. What families do you see there? Well, we've got more families than we can handle, really. I can't read them all. I'll, put them all, I'll tell you what, I'll put them all on the blog. Gosh, there's two pages worth of, well, at least one page worth of columns here. I'll just say a few of them. Of course, Fitz, Fitzgerald's. They made a tremendous impact on uh, County Kerry and uh, Tralee and Hussey, Joy, McCarthy. We all know McCarthy was prominent there. He was sort of like the overlord. Uh, Clancy, Egan, Elliot, Fanin, McGillicuddy, of course. McSweeney's were there. Cahill's, yeah, Cahill's moved in with the Donahues in America in several places, at least with my family. The Casey's and, of course, O'Connor. Those O'Connors are everywhere, but the O'Connors carry were a 
special case, a special family. And Max Sheehy, O'Daly, Delaney, Doolin, Falvey, Finity, Foley, Gallivan, Grady, uh, Lean, Mahoney, Moriarty. Moriarty was there in place of the Donahues for a while. They took care of those ships and Lock Lane and all that, and then they moved on when the Donahues came in. You know, they might have pushed them out. I don't really know. I'll have to look at that. That was about 1,200 years ago, maybe 1,000. Uh, oh, and who else? Well, there's 40 or 50 more families, but Scanlon and Shea and Sheehan and uh, Smerwick. Now, there, now, there's a name that came in from somewhere else. And then Stack and Tra Trant and Walsh. I know I've boy I've known a lot of Walshes and Stack oh there's Stack Stack Mountains there too so they're a pretty famous family. I just thought I'd let you know what kind of names that were put on the map in the annals of the Four Masters and that sure gives you an idea. Well, what have we got coming up else here? Uh, coming up later this episode, how do the Irish line up on the Muslim headscarf question uh, in Irish schools? It was after all against the rules. At least it started out that way. But it's time now to raise our eyes skywards, give thanks, and ask for help. Here is today's member search list and the Magnificent Seven. Well, new member Patrick Clark of New York, New York. And he's looking for Clark and Lynch and McDonald and Masterson. Uh, and hey, he's got some Cavan roots there too. We just got through talking a little bit about Cavan and the famous Donnellys. Hmm. Well, he's looking for a uh, Andrew Clark. And well, actually, he was Patrick Clark, son of Michael Clark, son of Patrick Clark, son of Andrew Clark. And he wants to go back beyond Andrew Clark. And of course, you have to determine would this Clark be an original Irish name? Could it have come from Clerken? Yeah, it takes some research to find out. And, of course, you can see Clark with the E on it and with the E, e taken off and put on at the end, uh, just depending on the uh, attitude of the people of the day. Sometimes they thought it was uh, special and fancy to add that E. I see that a lot in the 17th century records on a whole lot of names. Well, number two, new member Carolyn Aguar of Jamal, California, looking for Kane or O'Kane. And looking for any information on an Anthony Kane from County Clare. His son Patrick was born in Clare and immigrated to the U.S. in 1847. And she's looking more on the family. I'll have some more of that on the uh, 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 webpage if you want to see some more information. And number three, new member Sarah Carroll of Brockton, Massachusetts. Uh, looking for Carol, Meehan, Fitzgibbons, Casey, Bradshaw, Wilkinson, Baker, Owens, Moran, Devine, and Cox. Boy, she's got a whole slew. You must be related to half the people in the audience. Well, hey, there's somebody good to make contact with if you're looking. Number four, new member Eugene Blood of Norton, Massachusetts. Boy, we've got a lot of folks here from that area today. Uh, Byrne, McKiernan, Pryor, and Riley are the names he's looking for. And uh, here we go. He's looking for a researcher in the Cavan and Leitrim area. And he says, my burn is a McKiernan. No, my burn married a McKiernan. And he arrives in Philly. Also Pryor and Riley and others. DNA trace goes back to County Tyrone and Bernie. Hmm. So you Bernie people out there, you might have a connection. Very interesting. Let me see. That's just number four. We need three more. Let me reach down in here and get the last three lucky folks. Here we got uh, new member Martha Elliott of Cisco, Texas. Looking for Gallivan. And the Gallivan family was of Milltown County, Cary. And they have the baptismal record for great-great-grandfather Daniel uh, Gallivan in 1827 and the father's name was Demetrius Gallivan. Boy, I haven't run into too many Demetriuses. You might might have a Greek scholar there uh, way back there learning in the head schools in County Kerry. Uh, and the mother, Honora Dwyer Gallivan. Any information's appreciated. Relatives, descendants, you know that. And number six, new member M. Susan Catalano of Greenwich, Connecticut. Looking for Carolyn Dunn. 
and says, I'm looking for information on my Carroll and Dunn family from Westmeath. Thomas Carroll married Ann Dunn in 1844 at the Church of the Assumption, Tagmon. Number seven, Catherine Knight of Lee on the Sea, or just Lee on Sea in Essex in the UK. Uh, your surnames of Ireland and Irish families and birth index and the Kings and Queens Counties Ireland genealogy notes have shipped. And uh, good gosh, with any luck at all, they're already on your doorstep. I hope you enjoy them. You got a lot to look through there. And that reminds me to say thank you to all of our members because. <laughs> Without you, none of these podcasts would be possible, nor would any of the books. It takes a lot to keep things rolling. Well, now it's time to move on to the Irish family name of the day. Well, the name today is Cunahan, and you can just tell by the sound of that name that it's an Irish one, can't you? That H-A-N at the end of a name is, is usually a pretty good giveaway about that. And today's family history note is in the honor of uh, member Joseph P. Cunahan, Jr. And they are looking for a John James Cunahan, great-great-great-grandfather. And he shows up in Savannah, Georgia in 1870 when he marries. Hmm, I wonder what the background was. Maybe somebody out there can help. And uh, let's take a look at the related spellings of the name taken from the Master Guide to the various spellings of Irish family names. Well, you can have Cunahan spelled with a double O at the beginning or with an O-U, C-O-U-N-A-H-A-N, or those A's can be changed to I's. You know how that goes. And I'll put a couple other spellings in there on my uh, blog, some of the old Irish spellings. Uh, and they go, that's uh, from variant spelling groups number 328 and number 400, in case you're a scholar and want to look that up. Now, history of the name. What kind of notes do we have? Well, Cunahan's always been tied to County Kerry in the records. And uh, that's why if you go to the, the Book of Irish Families, Great and Small, that's where it refers you to is the uh, families of County Kerry. So that would be the book to be looking at if you're looking for some... Uh, Cunahan information and uh, it talks about Sean O'Cunahan who was a big time Munster poet and there were uh, nine families in County Kerry called either Cunningham or Cunahan and of course Cunningham was a name that was often uh, or sometimes interchanged or mistaken for Cunahan so be aware of that and uh, actually there were 38 families of the name spelled as Cunahan uh, given in the works of Jeremiah King. And it also talks about the uh, several of the family and names, and it mentions Palace of Aos Green and the Rectory of Kil Kunagain. Hmm, Kunagain. That must be how you spell it for Cunahan now, how you translate it. Uh, but it talks about uh, also a location near St. Munchens in Limerick. I've been there, stood there, and I think I looked across the river uh, when I was standing there. And uh, gosh, it talks about Cortain Castle in 1846 in Killarney Parish. And that came to be known as the Hall. And that was for sure the residence of the Cunahan family at one point. And that was built way back before 1829. Uh, and that'll do it for our notes. That gives you enough just to think about. It sure is documented in Kerry. Now, I took a look for the Irish family's coat of arms, but I didn't see anything documented in all those books I searched through. Uh, so uh, we won't have anything on that today, but I took a look at the Freemaster Index search of Irish names. And what do I find here? Well, Vincent Cunahan, I wrote about it in a journal back in volume 10. That would have been a long time ago, more than 10 years ago. And Vincent was a uh, driver I'd hire for people who, wanted, uh, who went on tours with me to Ireland. And if they wanted a little special driver that would uh, escort him around privately, uh, he'd do the driving and he knew the area and the people and grew up there and uh, he was just great. I don't think Vincent's with, Vincent is with us anymore, but some of the family still is from what I hear. Uh, also in the families of County Kerry, Ireland that we just mentioned, of course it's in that. And it's also some of those folks must have traveled because we've got them in families of County Donegal, families of County 
Dublin, and of course in the birth index of Ireland, but we know that's going to say Kerry. And uh, Irish Names and Surnames by Patrick Wolfe is another great book that uh, the family's included in. Well, let's move on now to the website of the week. Today's website's going to be uh, concerning the Galway Arts Festival and activities in Galway. And that's from the Galway Advertiser. I picked the article up. It's pretty interesting. And that gives you an idea of what's happening in Galway this time of year. I'm telling you what. Theater, dance, music, comedy, art, and street events are going to be easy to find this year. And that includes sculptors and photographers. We've got another note coming up later on some of the movie things going on. Uh, now, there is a, another page uh, for the Galway Arts Festival, but I couldn't get it to work on the web. It was just stalled out, so I thought I'd substitute this one. Well, let's move on to curious news and notes before we close things out today. Hey, you know what? You think gas is high in America? Think again. In Ireland, it was over $7.50 just the last time I checked. Good thing that's a small island, isn't it? Hey, the Christian brothers are leaving Ireland, and that's after about two centuries worth of uh, contributions. Back in the 1960s, there were over a thousand Christian brothers teaching in Irish schools. Some of those guys are pretty tough from what I hear, but now there's only 10 of them left, and soon there's going to be none. Uh, their original model, well, motto was Catholic and Celtic to God and Ireland true. Uh, but now they're leaving, and of course there were some troubles. There were some troubles. There was a little scandal there. Some people uh, got off on the wrong track, but that's far beyond me. Hey, here's another one, number three. Money for your movie idea. If you're a filmmaker who can't or doesn't know how to get a film made and published, you're asked to drop your ideas off to the Galway Film Flea from the 8th to the 13th of July. It says you can submit a 500-word story idea for a screen, and the winner gets a check for 3,000 euros. All pitches will be open in front of the audience during the Galway Film Flea. Hey, and guess what? Peter O'Toole is also going to be honored there this year. He's one heck of a character actor, I'll say that. Number four, Uncovering at the Blarney Stone. Now here's one for the books, and the times they are a-changing every day, aren't they? A thousand people are going to Blarney Castle and posing for a picture in the buff, a natural, you understand, I think. And as, as part of the Midsummer Festival, they're going to be doing that and getting photographed. They're doing photographs like that all across uh, Europe. I guess they'll come out in a book, I don't know. I can't imagine uh, wanting to look at that book very long. Well, it happened on the 17th, so it's a fact. And uh, now, how would you like to have that sight before you after climbing up the stairs at Blarney Castle and uh, leaning back and kissing that rock? And my gosh, you look over the turret and you see a thousand people running around. <laughs> That'd be something else. Saying ain't so, Joe. I bet you that never happened before in Ireland. At least not there. I wonder if the film festival folks will be there. They could get some shots for that. But I wonder, is it okay for a thousand people to walk around in public like that? There's just too many questions these days. Hey, number five, we just got one, one or two more. Number five, oppression easing. Hey, you know, our list for the richest folks in Northern Ireland came out not too long ago. And it would have surprised you. Over half of them were Catholic, and that's good news for everyone. It looks like some of these ghettos may be getting broken up, and uh, there's going to be some equality there, which is part of the reason for, uh, for peace breaking out. I think that's a real good thing. Hey, number six, no drinking in Dublin. Drinking in public is now going to be banned in Dublin City, and you can be fined right on the spot. And if you forget to give your true name and address... And it looks like they were counting on some folks to be given false names and addresses. The fine could be as much as 1,900 euro. Boy, and if you refuse to move on when he comes by and says, move on now, well, you can get a fine of up to $75. That's a terrible thing. Now, up to now, the guardie could only seize liquor from minors. 
but after September, they can take it from adults. Can you imagine the trouble of disposing of all that liquid at the end of each day or month? I tell you one time, I came over there by mistake with some steaks they sold me in New York, and they confiscated my steaks at the airport, and I found out later they had quite a barbecue that night. Ah, if I only known I had treated them, I would have asked for some special favors. Number seven, breaking the rules in schools. Now, the Irish seem to be split on whether Muslim students should be able to wear headscarves in school. Uh, things came to a head just a little bit ago in Wexford when, even though it was clearly against the rules, someone asked if they could wear a headscarf, a Muslim headscarf. And uh, the latest poll of the Irish population showed uh, just a, a little bit more said, yeah, they could. And, uh, you know, 46, 47 percent said, uh, no, they shouldn't be able to. So it's a battle about rules there. They'll have to come up with some kind of agree to do something uh, to keep everybody happy. Maybe they'll they'll put a little doily on the head instead of a uh, full head scarf. Would that work? I don't know. Well, it'll be interesting to watch. Uh, number eight, Los Angeles is cut. Well, Aer Lingus is going to suspend service from Dublin to Los Angeles in November. Part of a budget cutting operation, I bet. I don't have any more details, but you can find it on the web. And number nine, the big political news that went throughout the whole little island of Ireland and had shockwaves all throughout Europe is the Lisbon Treaty. And uh, it was a very big deal for the European Union and Ireland was the only nation that required its own people to actually vote on this uh, treaty. Well, the vote in Ireland is in, and it voted 53 to 46% against it. Now, that means Ireland's going to retain more independence as a sovereign nation. France and Germany intend to press ahead with the plan anyway. But, you know, I was thinking, Ireland has had independence for less than 100 years, more like 80 you might not want to rush into giving it up too quickly. I can't blame them for that, for sure. But I don't know the details of the agreement, so I better not spout off. I could end up being on the wrong side of the right argument. Well, hey, that does it. That does it for the day. Remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at irishroots.com or send by mail to our American address at Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world on my phone recorder at 816-256-3360 or Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we are open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members and away. Oh,